2020 was a year, a year where all the self-care, hustle harder, book stack, self-empowering memes finally made sense. You see, it's one thing to post black girl magic, but it's another to actually lift the lid to the container on your own awesomeness and be bold enough to share that with the world unapologetically. But that's just what I did, insert side. I quit my job, brought all the cutouts in my vision board to life, trusted the mess out of God, and finally decided to believe that me, a tried, trusted, and proven, awkward black girl, just might, maybe, be enough. I think the beauty in the pandemic for me, and I think a lot of people, is that uncomfortability uncomfort really led to action. Black women earn 63 cents for every dollar earned by white non-Hispanic men. They have experienced high unemployment, especially during the pandemic, 10.9% compared to 76 for white women. A local woman is trying to change those Department of Labor findings and help black women thrive in the workplace. Thrive In is a community and business dedicated to really empowering and equipping black women in their 20s and 30s with the tools, resources, and transformational access to Thrive In work. She took on a full-time effort, which she started, Thrive In. We are all about how can we shine a spotlight on women who we know are talented, that we know are qualified, and how can we make their journey that much easier. I've never been as self-aware that I'm a black woman existing today than in 2020. And I say that because intersectionality is real and all the things that make us who we are. And I always say, I'm like, black women are superheroes. Like Superman has nothing on us. I'm like, because kryptonite wouldn't kill us. And it hasn't. And we've drank it almost every day. It can be very taxing when we really think about it. And I think for me, that's why I like to stay busy. And I've been so busy for so many years because if we really sit and think about, you know, a 16 year old has just been killed, you know, miles away from where we live and George Floyd, who's somebody's son. And we're out here raising sons and all these things. And you have trans black women who are being killed at crazy rates right now. We're losing jobs. When you really think about all the different stats and that nothing is in our favor on paper, it can be very, very taxing to exist, even for me as a business owner. When all the businesses that are expected to close or most businesses that don't make it past a year, when you look at the polls, who's number one for those? It's black women. And so when you think about that and you're seeing that in the news, you're seeing it in the headlines, we're seeing all these stories of black women, we're at work and I'm talking to friends, like I'm on this meeting and I'm breaking down because George Floyd has happened, but I'm the only black person in this white environment. And so now I'm trying to attempt to explain to potentially a non-believer what my existence is. And now I'm having to debate it as if there's something to debate about how I feel in my lived experience. And, and I've never been as aware of the, of the climate that we're in. And so that has been very difficult when I really, really stop in my idle moments to think about it. Because again, when you turn on the news and all these things, it, just, it hits different. It, it, it really, really does. I think a lot of times it's, it's so much easier to have sympathy for the black man. And this is with me and my feminism hat on because we, we're used to that. We've seen that our whole lives. But while all these things are happening a lot of times with the black man or with other people, well, who you think is still cooking in the kitchen and making sure the baby's fed while trying to be cute when husband comes home and going to work and doing all these things and, and we continue to show up. And sometimes you just don't want to show up. There's a lot of guilt with that and not showing up because so many people may depend on us and we depend on ourselves. Um, and so it's just, it's interesting. It is interesting, but that's, that's been difficult with 2020 when I really, really think about all those things. I'm just like, whew, I'm like, it's real out here. And I'm like, you know, for me, I live a pretty optimistic, faith-based life, but I'm like, you know, my heart really hurts for the women who may not have that same mindset yet and are really, really struggling to keep it together um, is a very, very sad thing because I always think it's more than a hashtag of protecting black women, but there's really not a lot of people who are.